Hey everyone, this is John Dickinson from Motionworks, back with another After Effects A to Z tip for you. This time we're going to be taking a look at the Difference Mat, and I used Difference Mat very recently in a project and it was extremely effective. But before we take a look at the Difference Mat, I'm going to show you a very useful technique in Photoshop for creating a clean plate. So we'll start here in Photoshop. I'm going to go to the File menu and choose Import, Video Frames to Layers. We're going to load a QuickTime file up as Photoshop Layers. I'm going to choose Edit. And this is the full 60 second edit from which I want to choose a short section. And I can use these trim markers to choose that section. Don't have to be too precise because I can clean it up when these are converted to layers. Probably just to there and starting there. And I'm going to click OK. OK, so you can see here now that we have a bunch of layers in the layer panel. Most of them are from the shot that we need, but there's a few layers down the bottom here that we don't need. It's going to delete those. Okay, so this is a shot of a car moving from left to right across the frame and leaves are following behind it. And what I want to do in After Effects is key out these leaves so I can put some text into the scene. But first of all, I need to create a clean plate. And to do that, what I do is select all of these layers that make up the shot, right click and choose Convert to Smart Object. And with the Smart Object selected, come to the Layer menu and choose Smart Objects, Stack Mode, Median. And watch this. Okay, so the majority of the leaves have disappeared. Let's just undo that. Just toggling that. Look at that, what a difference that makes. Especially over here on the left, and this is where I want to place the text, so this is the most important part. Look around the trees here. So by combining these frames into a median stack, we're filtering out all of the leaves. And this only works because the camera's locked off. If the camera was moving, then this would be nowhere near as effective. And you can see, it isn't perfect, we've still got the shadow of the car and you can still see a little bit of the car on the right hand side here. You could use a few techniques to clean this up. I don't really need to worry about the right hand side of the frame because as I said the text is going in the left hand side. But if you needed the whole plate to be clean, you could open up the smart object and find a layer that was fairly clean on this side. Just holding down Option or Alt and clicking the eyeball to solo layers. This one here is pretty good. This is the first frame. And you can see the car hasn't actually passed by yet. So this is a nice clean section of the frame. So with that layer selected, if I right click and choose Duplicate Layer. And choose the Untitled 4 document as my target and click OK. Just unsolo these layers. Save that and close it. Here's that layer now inside Untitled 4. And you can see that's quite clean over this area. What I like to do is just drop the opacity of this layer. Just slide that down. So I can see the underlying layer and where I need to cover that up. And just use the Lasso tool. And draw around that. Click on Add Layer Mask and make that 100% opacity. And now we've masked out that layer. Not quite perfect around this area here. So what I would probably do now is select both of those, just drop them into a folder, duplicate that folder, and just merge that group. Now I've got one merged layer, just keeping these ones just in case inside group one. Once again grab my lasso tool, draw around each of these leaves, press shift delete on the keyboard and use content aware and click OK. And sometimes you have to use content aware a few times to get the results you want. 
but this is way, way faster than using the clone tool. Let me get rid of this one down here. And that's basically how I cleaned up the plate. Let's go across to After Effects now and I'll show you the final plate that I used and how to use that with the difference mat. Okay, so here we are in After Effects and here's my clean plate, the one I did for this job. Let's just turn on the edit. And you can see what a huge difference that smart object median stack mode made to cleaning up this shot. Imagine if I'd had to clone all of these leaves out one by one, that would have been a nightmare. So it definitely really accelerated this process. Quite amazing, it always blows me away. Next I have the text layer. That's the text sitting on top. And above that, I have another copy of the edit. And you can see now that the leaves are sitting in front. That's because I have the effect already applied. Doesn't matter about this section here, I'm only interested about the leaves that get pulled behind the car. We'll look at the final composition in a moment. But let's go into the effect control panel and I'm going to turn off directional blur for a moment. I'm going to delete difference mat and let's apply difference mat to this shot and use the effect and presets panel. Type in DIFF, double click difference mat. And for the difference layer, I want to choose layer number five, the clean plate. And you can already see what a difference that is making. Pardon my pun. It's pulled out those leaves from the background. It has left a very chunky edge. You have got some settings you can use here. You've got a tolerance setting. You've got a softness setting. And you've got a blur before different setting. So that blurs the shot before applying the difference. And I left this all at its defaults because what I did is apply the directional blur effect at 90 degrees. If I just turn that on, and that just blurred those leaves out. You can see that just did a really nice job of blurring those leaves. And it was as simple as that. The main thing is getting that clean plate. Without it, you really can't get this effect to work. Let's go across to the final composition now, and I'll show you how I finished this shot off. So that's exactly where we were in the previous composition. It's going to turn a few layers on. There's the edit, the clean plate. I have this shadow catcher layer. It's going to solo that layer. This is the layer that the text sits on that catches the 3D shadows, making this look more, more realistic. It's going to turn the lights on. and I'm going to turn the text on and you can see how those shadows are being cast on that shadow catcher. Here in After Effects CS6 I've chosen Accept Shadows Only. So that's what makes this layer a shadow catcher layer. I haven't had to play with the blend modes at all. So I turn the edit back on you can see how the shadows are now sitting on the road. Okay, I'm going to turn leaves back on now. You can see how the leaves, once again, are flying past the text. The text is looking a lot more realistic now. And I have actually applied some color to some of these lights. That one's slightly yellow. That one's a little more yellow. Yellow again. And this one's slightly blue. And you can see that's created the text quite nicely just by coloring the lights, making it appear more naturally in the scene. One of the issues I found was that pulling out the leaves with a difference mat also pulled out these leaves in the background. And I needed the text to be in front of these leaves because these leaves technically are behind the text. So what I did was duplicate the text a couple of times and just place that above the leaves layer and that just masked out some of those leaves. It would have looked less convincing if I'd had those leaves in the distance still in front of the text. So this just helped to mask those out. This was pretty rough and dirty. This is quite a quick job and didn't have to be too detailed. 
Now, something else that I added, just to try and make this look a little more realistic, was some shadows for the leaves. That was just a case of duplicating the leaves and just using the text as a mat to mask them out. Let's just solo that. And you can see it there. So I duplicated the leaves layer, which has the difference mat, and I filled that up with just this light brown color. That just makes the leaves appear to cast a shadow on the text as they fly past the text, which just makes this look a little more realistic. Okay, next was the car roto. You can see I've got a number of masks that I use for the car. I only had to roto a few frames because it only actually passes in front of the text for a few frames. Now luckily here in After Effects CS6 we have per vertex feathering for masks. If I just select one of these masks you can see that I can feather per vertice and you can choose the mask feather tool up under the pen tool here. Just down here, mask feather tool. Next is leaves roto. And you can see here I have actually rotoed out some of the leaves. Would have been a nightmare if I'd had to roto out all the leaves. But I rotoed a couple of them back in, some of the ones that just were pulled out when the uh, clean plate was created. And these just help sell the shot a little bit. You can see here just a couple of bigger leaves that fly in front of the text. Next is some occlusion. And that's just simply a shape layer with a gradient. And that's just placed in front of the text by using the text as an alpha mat. Here it is there. And just by dropping that at the base of the text, it helps ground this text, makes it look a little more believable. We've already talked about the lights. I have actually applied some grain to the text as well. You can see I've used match grain and I've matched the grain from the original shot by choosing 18 edit as the noise source layer. This only took me probably about half a day to do this shot. It would have taken me a lot longer if I had to roto out all of the leaves. So being able to create a clean plate in Photoshop using smart layers and the median stacking mode and having the difference made in After Effects definitely saved me a lot of time. I know it's not a perfect shot. There's definitely things that could be fixed, but uh, definitely did the trick for the job at hand and um, I was able to move on to other shots and get this job out the door. So hopefully you found that useful. For now, this is John from Motionworks. Have fun, be creative, and I'll see you in another tutorial.